Coming up on Koshi's Business Builders, the process of finding investors for a new business, how one South Australian food manufacturer rescued its own business, and get tips from skincare success stories you leak on setting yourself apart from the competition. Welcome back to another edition of Koshy's Business Builders. I love Melbourne's famous De Graves Street. These lanes are full of such interesting small businesses of all different shapes and sizes and colours. It's fascinating. Now we've got a jam-packed show this week, so let's get straight into it with news you can use. Mobile usage is at an all-time high, attracting a massive one-fifth of all media consumption time. In fact, in the US, consumers are now spending as much time on mobile devices as they are on desktops and laptops combined. As this tipping point continues to tilt, smartphones and tablets will combine for well over half the global base of active internet devices by the end of 2013. Australia is front and centre of the boom, now boasting over 18 million mobile internet subscribers, downloading the equivalent of 38,000 movies a day. And with the latest stats revealing one in three Google searches made from mobile devices are local, small business can't afford to overlook the opportunity because that means people in your area looking for your business. Are you compatible with that? Finding investors to back a new business is tough, even at the best of times, but it's certainly not out of your reach, as demonstrated by the folks at Sydney startup Canva, who recently raised a very handy $3 million. We caught up with the co-founders, Melanie Perkins and Cliff Obrett, to see what we could learn from their experience sourcing and securing investors. Melanie, we've got a terrific Australian tech story on our hands. Tell us a bit about how you got started and what exactly Canva does. So Canva is an online design platform that makes it really easy for anyone to create professional quality designs. It's been designed to be so simple that it's just literally drag and drop in the browser. Okay, was this your first startup experience? This is actually our second startup. So we had previously started another company called Fusion Books. So how did you fund that first business, Cliff? We were just two people sitting in a living room with a big idea. So we knew that part, the biggest part of that idea was the technology we had to have developed. So we ended up getting a loan for that uh, technology and then built everything around that. And one of the biggest drivers of growth for Fusion was investing our profits year on year back into the company. So the track record was almost as important as the idea itself? Absolutely. The idea is, of course, a really important aspect and the vision meant that investors were able to... People who invested really believed that we could achieve that. But being able to demonstrate that we'd done it before really helped with that process. Going to investors with, you know, something that isn't launched, how developed does the idea need to be before you take it? Having Fusion Books really helped us to prove out that we had a product that people needed. We were having schools were constantly asking to use our product for other things like their newsletters or their marketing materials. And so having that experience really helped to um, help us to raise money for Canva because people could see that we could build a product, that we could grow a company, that we knew how to manage that whole process. And so that was really integral. So $3 million, it sounds like a huge sum for a startup, Mel. How do you put that to work? So with that funding, it's really enabled us to work with some of the best people in the world. It's enabled us to pursue a very, very big vision. And it really has given us the power to take on a global challenge with a lot of vigour. So Melanie, when you went to investors, was it just cash you were looking for or was there a specific sort of profile you were after? At the start when we were raising money, we were just trying to find anyone that would actually believe in our vision and want to get on board. But we ended up with some of the best investors that were able to really help refine our vision so, and our strategy. So we've got the CFO of Yahoo and um, the founder of Google Maps, Lars Rasmussen. So not only were they able to bring cash to the company, they were able to bring us a lot of experience, a lot of strategy. Um, they helped us to hire and to find some of our team members. So Cameron Adams came from an introduction from Lars Rasmussen. Um, also Dave Herndon came from an introduction who he was one of the, sen the senior engineers at Google. OK, and Cliff, how do you make the most of that experience? Having these investors at the end of the phone, how do you make the most of that? 
Each of our investors have different strengths, like the venture capital investors definitely have a lot of strengths around raising money. And so once we started speaking with a few of them at the start of our fundraising process, they helped us close our round and gave us a strategy or helped us with that strategy to close up our round. Other investors like Paul Bassett from Seek, for example, he's extremely production focused. So when it comes into the operations and production side of the business, we might call on someone with those types of experience. And when it comes to financial and the CFO type stuff, we also have other investors that we may leverage for their knowledge in that particular field. So having a diverse spread of investors really helps us to pick and choose different people for different uh, stages of the business. Coming up next on KBB, how to bring your business back from the brink. This payments tip brought to you by BPay. If you're a small business, why should you consider using BPay to collect payments? Here are four simple reasons. Firstly, accelerate your cash flow. Receive clear funds in your account as soon as the next banking business day and say goodbye to chargebacks and bouncing checks. Secondly, reconcile your accounts more easily. Track bills easily with daily payment files that can be transferred onto your accounting system. Thirdly, manage your overheads. As a BPay biller, you'll spend less time and money preparing and chasing bills and more time running your business. And finally, support your customers. Give your customers the option of enjoying the security and confidence of Australia's most popular payment service. Visit bpay.com.au slash SME for more information. Earlier this year, Adelaide pickled food favourite Spring Gully was forced into voluntary administration by a perfect storm of trading conditions. But since then, they bounced back into business, thanks to some decisions and a strong communication strategy. To find out exactly how they did it, KBB's Alex Brophy caught up with the man calling the shots and the administrator that's overseen this remarkable turnaround. Terrific family story. In April, it came a bit unstuck when you announced you were going into voluntary administration. What happened there? I, I use the term perfect storm uh, for events where we were uh, enduring uh, low margins in manufacturing in this country for the last uh, couple of years, uh, combined with a high cost of sale out in the marketplace, um, with a uh, product mix change for us uh, in the year of 2012. Uh, combined with a, a, a rapid uh, uh, decline in sales over a few weeks prior to, the, to November. Now Austin, from the outside, when Spring Gully first came to you, did you think it was salvageable? No, I didn't. I, I looked at it and uh, with its cash flow position, I really thought that it was in, uh, you know, it had very much had it, uh, the work in front of it. Okay. And Kevin, how did you get out of it? How have you turned this thing around? Uh, we got advice uh, from uh, our uh, PR company, Corporate Conversation, that um, we needed to talk and, and, and work with, with the media. The radio stations and, and so forth picked up the story uh, as we talked to them and, 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 and told them our plight. Um, and that afternoon there was uh, radio programs, a talkback radio programs that devoted their whole three-hour shift just to save Spring Gully. By uh, around about 4pm that afternoon on the 12th, uh, uh, Say Spring Gully Facebook pages were being put up by people out in the, in the community. We took control of a Facebook page uh, and made it our own. Mm -hmm. uh, we've set up a uh, social media committee within the business. By waking on Saturday morning the 13th, we had 1,100 likes on, on that Facebook page. And by Tuesday, we, we hit the, just under 17,000 likes. It allowed us to get our message out to uh, many, many people through that uh, uh, medium. That then uh, uh, related back to people then saying, OK, we want to save, we want to do something here. So they left their homes and they went to the shops. Uh, and on the 13th, the Saturday the 13th, all, all the three majors here in Adelaide were on the phone to us. We need, we need stock. How are we going to do this? And Kevin, from your perspective, obviously the, the media coverage and the social media swell, we had a huge influence. What other sort of strategies were there that were crucial to this turnaround? We worked hard on identifying the, the problems, which was um, uh, lean manufacturing, uh, better cost accounting, manufacturing cost accounting and marketing. So 
What we went about doing was fixing the key areas. Uh, we put teams together, uh, Austin, myself and Nick Xenophon, uh, went out there to work with our, our retailers. Um, and then another team uh, of uh, Equity Advisory and myself uh, and Rob Strempel, we worked hard on the investment side and putting together the, the proposal that was required for Austin to put to the creditors. And what, was, what, what were the keys in your eyes to the, such a rapid turnaround? They had a huge uh, jump in their sales, uh, one and a half million in three days. So that gave us a, a cash injection, which enabled us to keep operating. And it was the effort of the family that, that really came together. I mean, that nobody, nobody dropped their bundle. Everybody turned up to work, worked really, really hard and um, didn't shirk all the, you know, all the difficult decisions that needed to be made. So Kevin, what does the business look like now? Um, the business performed as we thought it would. Uh, it outstripped its sales budgets uh, uh, by just over 20%, which was uh, a big number. Um, and the future now looks bright. I love the Spring Gully turnaround story. It just shows that if you're up front with your customers, they'll actually try and help you out of your problems. Up next, we find out how premium Aussie skincare outfit Jolique sets itself apart from the competition. This business tip brought to you by NAB. We see Australian business. David, you say you see Australian business. Say I'm a pet food company looking for finance. What should I do? Yes, so if you're looking for finance costs, it means you're probably going to have to expand. And if you need to have a loan, that we need to see some more details on you and understand a bit more about you and about your company. OK, so how do I do that? So the first thing to do is to come in and we'd ask you to bring a number of things. The first one being a business plan. You know, what's your business? What are your products? Who are your competitors? And what do you understand about the market? What's next? Then after that, we'd look at a cash flow projection. So how are you going for cash in the business? What cash do you need to run the business to pay your wages, etc.? And number three? And number three would be security. So that may well be uh, some, uh, some residential premises or other assets that you may have. And that would give me my best chance for success? It means that we can understand what your needs are, what your financial position is, and how we give you the right loan for the right reasons. Great. And you'll help me through with it? I'll certainly help you with that. For more information, visit nab.com.au slash smallbusiness. Aussie skincare company Jolique has been a booming success both here and abroad. A premium product, strong brand and long history have all been important to their success. But what is it in particular that sets them apart in such a crowded market? To find out, we caught up with Jolique Chief Executive Sam Mackay. It's quite a crowded market, the Australian skincare market. What do you do to stand out? So a lot of our global competitors have significant uh, above-the-line advertising budgets, which is not our business model, so we're not going to outspend them. So the challenge and opportunity for us is to find unique ways to communicate with our customers. Our key point of difference is that we bring nature and science together. So we're all about bringing highly efficacious products to consumers with a natural formula. And Sam, when marketing the product, you don't really follow a traditional path. What's the strategy there? Our store environment, whether it being a duty-free store, whether it being a Sephora, whether it being a Myra David Jones or one of our standalone stores, is a, is a key way for us to engage with consumers and find a way to get product and skin with our you know, high-quality beauty advisors. Um, our farm, so having farm tours and bringing that to life for consumers is another key point of difference. And then PR and word of mouth are, are very effective tools for us. More recently, we've become actively involved in digital and so now have a heav heavy focus on what we're doing with Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. OK, and what's the most important aspect of that in maintaining that sort of premium brand? Um, whilst the product offering varies slightly in different geographies, so for example in Asia there's more a focus on skin whitening, so we have more of a whitening skew focus there compared to Australia, mm -hmm. but really making sure that we have a consistent brand experience globally is you know, very, very important. So Sam, what role does your Adelaide farm play in the business? Uh, our farm is biodynamic and organically certified. And what that means is that we're able to grow over 40 uh, variants uh, of plants that actually are used in our product. OK. And is opening that to the public more a branding exercise or does it actually bring in more business? Um, it, it's predominantly a branding exercise. It's a great opportunity for our customers to understand why our brand is different mm -hmm. and the very complex and real manufacturing process that we use. 
So Sam, you've grown the business to 1,200 stores, 23 countries. How do you manage that? So what we did initially was appoint distributors around the world where they would manage the business really on our behalf. We would take less operational and financial risk. And then over time, for key strategic markets like Japan, mainland China and Hong Kong in particular, we've acquired those businesses back and then put in uh, high quality local talent to run the business. So Sam, over the past few years, we've seen a lot of manufacturers fall over. What are the keys to Jalik's success in the area? The brand has been growing um, at 20% plus growth month on month, year on year. So we've had six significant volume increases, which means that we're able to really leverage the fixed overhead that we have on our Adelaide manufacturing facilities. Mm -hmm. Um, furthermore, ignoring the economic benefit, um, from a brand pers uh, perspective, it's very important to us as a brand that we continue to be an Australian manufactured brand and that we have that authenticity and heritage around our story. Coming up, we answer another of your small business specifics in Ask Koshy. This segment brought to you by Telstra. I run Altered Images Photography. I'm currently my 28th year. I studied commercial photography straight after finishing high school and always uh, wanted to run a commercial photography studio. Over the years I've shot weddings, I've shot portraits, but for the last 12 or 13 years I've been focused purely on uh, generalist commercial photography. I pretty much do everything from capture through to final output of the image so I will photograph the job and then I'll do the retouching and tidying up and clipping and everything. In the, in the early days I, I, I thought that if I rented a shop and put a sign on the front window and I opened the door that they'd come running to me and I sat there twiddling my thumbs waiting for business to come and you know I'm a slow learner. It took me a couple of years to realise that it wasn't going to happen and you know, I really had to get myself out there. The biggest challenge has been and always will be is getting new business, is marketing yourself out to, to your target market and actually getting, getting leads and getting people interested to use your services. Part of my um, weekly program, if you like, is to contact new businesses, first by phone, to see if I can get out there and, and, and visit them and, and put my work in front of them so they can see what I'm doing. I could go and see someone and they may not have a need for a photographer at that particular point in time. So what I do is from time to time I'll drop them a newsletter or an email or something just to remind them who I am and, and where I am and how I can help their business. I think the biggest key is identifying your target market and working out what you're really worth. A lot of photographers will just pluck a, a fee out of thin air and, and go out and, and charge a rate that's really not sustainable. Communication is of vital importance to me and, and because I'm not always confined to the studio here, I'm regularly out and about. So it's important to me that I can, that I can get my calls and the great thing about DOT, digital office technology from Telstra, is people dial my landline and I can receive my calls when I'm out on the go. Prior to, to DOT, I was diverting all of my phone calls. But with digital office technology, you put in the phone numbers of the numbers that you would like to uh, be included in the simultaneous ring. And my mobile phone rings simultaneously with my landline. The second feature that really appealed to me was voicemail to email. Uh, essentially, all my uh, phone calls would be diverted to voicemail. And I'd do that through the dot control panel. And then my voicemail messages would be forwarded onto my email account um, as web files. So when I'm on the go, I can review those emails and have a listen to my messages at my convenience. The setup process was very quick and straightforward. The technician arrived when he said he would, installed the hardware, and then sat down and went through the features with me and helped me key in my own mobile number and so forth so that, so that simultaneous ring would work straight away, you know, from the time he left. It's made a huge improvement to my business and it's, it's effectively streamlined every aspect of my business. To find out more, go online and visit telstra.com slash dot. This tech tip brought to you by McAfee. Now we've all heard of Google, but you may not have heard of Google Analytics. Now this is a way for you to measure your website's performance so you can see how it's doing and maybe how you can get more business. Google Analytics is a free tool 
you log on, and inside you can see your customers' profiles. That means who they are, where they're coming from, and how often they visit your site's pages. You can also see how your site is being socially shared on things like Facebook and Twitter. More importantly, you can see how many people are going to your website on mobile devices like tablets and smartphones. Now there is a paid version as well if you want to get even more information, but a great place to start is Google Analytics free tool. It's really something that any business should not do without. Time to answer some more of your questions. This one from Nicola. Now, my partner wants to start a small mobile business, but the bank won't lend for the equipment without a track record, and he can't earn the money until he gets the machine. What can we do? All right, Nicola, asset finance specialists are perfect for these situations. They can finance everything from the initial capital outlay to transport to warehousing of equipment. The interest will be a bit dearer than a secured bank loan, but it is certainly a viable option. Just be sure the asset you're purchasing will provide a return that covers the cost of the finance. Hopefully that helps and good luck with the business. Now, if you're not on board the KBB Weekly Newsletter, then you are missing out all the best of the week's business news from our expert journalists, plus a heap of interviews that didn't make it into this episode are all there. Get involved at koshisbusinessbuilders.com.au. Catch you next time. Next week on KBB, small business tax tips for the year ahead some social media sales tips from Sanchuro and we hear from another fantastic Aussie success story.